coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles. We go to Vancouver Island, Canada for the only rider built competition of the FMB Tour, the Bear Claw Invitational. Darren shows us what it takes to make it happen and shows the boys how to live island style. Welcome to Vancouver Island on the west coast of Canada, home to one of the most respected mountain bike contests of the year, the Bear Claw Invitational. We join free ride legend Darren Bearcloth as he constructs one of the most technically difficult courses of the year. Here we are on Mount Washington, and this is the site of my competition. This is, uh, will be my fourth year I've done it. This year was a little bit uh, stressful just because of snow. We had like world record snowfall up on this mountain this year. I wasn't able to start on the course till pretty much two weeks ago. It was actually a bit of a, a rocky start. I got two days in, good weather, everything was going good, and then it just started a monsoon rain. And I pretty much got shut down for five days. Nothing I could really do, playing in the mud. One, two, three. And fortunately, the weather turned around and it started to dry out. I love to build and I love being in machines and moving dirt around and chainsaw and basically just being a redneck. Uh, that's pretty much what I like to do. <laughs> been pretty close to being done here, uh, hopefully in about five days or so. Hopefully after the weekend I'll have it all dialed in. It's been two years since the last Bear Claw Invitational and riders have been hungry for another. Finally, amidst the thick west coast rainforest, they're getting a taste of it before finals. This year's course is, is really technical and a lot of the riders are uh, throwing big tricks. And uh, I mean, this kind of course has got to be consistent top to bottom. And whether you throw a huge trick in on one jump and if you miss the next jump, then uh, you're kind of screwed. So you got to keep it solid top to bottom to really get it going. This is really technical, like it's really tight and all the moves are big and so it's really hard to keep the flow going and it's difficult but when it comes together it's so good. winds down, they dial in their runs before putting their bikes down for a few days of rest. The island where we live in, it's, it's a pretty all-time place, basically my favorite place on earth and it's pretty cool to get out with the boys and you know, show them what we, uh, what we do out here and all the, you know, the crazy beautiful places that we get to go uh, spend our leisure time. Being on the FMP World Tour, riders travel a lot. But between training and competition, they rarely get a chance to enjoy the places they go. Being the man in charge, Darren has made sure his friends experience the West Coast culture, island style. It's nice to uh, come out here and relax with boys before my event goes off. Super cool, you know, these guys never uh, been out fishing before and, and you know, some, for me it's this is what we do, you know, on any given weekend. But at the end of the day, for these guys, it's you know, it's like a lifetime experience for them. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to uh, see the boys freaking hauling in some lunkers, Goldman, pulling in a couple, some, a couple hammers there a little while back. I think there's about 25 crab in here. I'm gonna put them, go to the limb and say 25. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thanks, man. 
So a typical Islander, you know, they're a little bit more rough around the edges. It's uh, it's fun, you know. It's uh, everyone's super chill, laid back here, and I like to have a good time. Back at Darren's house, fellow local Steve Smith joins him to do some early season motocross riding. Yep. Smith is a World Cup downhill racer and currently sits in fifth place on the UCI World Cup. Well, it's good because he's pretty much my only friend that does the same thing as me. We have the same schedule on it. If you go alone, it's just not the same because when you do something sick, it's not as sweet. <laughs> to ride bikes and we both love the moto as well so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty funny to be pushing each other in the same uh, unit. It's always good switching it up. Keeping it pinned in here for 15 minutes is, makes a five minute down race feel like nothing. Totally. <laughs> yeah. For myself and a lot of, a lot of guys like Steve, we don't really do things that aren't pushing our limits because that's kind of what makes us tick. You know, if I go out there and, and ride a dirt jump and just do like one-handers all day, I'm not having fun because I'm not pushing my limits. Contest day has come and the energy is high as they put some final touches on the course. Right now I'm fourth in the rank and um, yeah, I just want to get into top three. After a disappointing joyride through the bike breakdowns, Sam Pilgrim throws down early in the day, hoping to climb back up the FMB rankings. The man himself, Darren Bearclaw, is up trading in his hard hat for a full face, ready to get to work. He gets down to business quick. I still come around, I got through a couple of bottles here and there, but uh, yeah, I had fun, it was awesome. It's fun, it's a hard course, and that's the way I wanted to design it so that, you know, to really do good at this event, you gotta be on it. Everybody's having a good time, sun's out, good time. Even with so many trophies to his name, he's most recognized for his memorable and unique video segments, being first to cross over BMX tricks to the mountain bike world. I always wanted to go big, and I always loved to go fast. And that was the one limitation that I always had, you know, riding my little bike, such as my BMX. You know, I'd always drive by Kamloops as I was a kid, and I'd go, oh man, I want to ride that. I started riding this terrain, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know? And, you know, my mind started clicking, and I started thinking, I was like, man, you know, like, there's really no reason why I can't do all the tricks that I know how to do on my BMX on these mountain bikes. And there's no reason I can't take all those tricks on a mountain bike into the mountains and into these like big slopes and terrains. His video segments changed the game. Definitely a uh, big satisfaction, you know, the first time seeing those images and, and seeing them all linked together and having it all work, worked out sometimes way better than you thought it was and sometimes just as good. It's a pretty cool feeling. You know, a lot of people get to, to do that in their lifetime and. It's, uh, yeah, it's really something special. After some wild early performances, the crowd prepares for the most exciting young rider from last week's Red Bull Joyride, 15-year-old Anthony Mazzari. He 
takes over, but like last time, there's still FMB World Tour leader Brandon Semenak, who's been on fire all season and is closing in on the overall FMB title. His hot streak doesn't stop, and he takes win number five, securing him as the 2011 FMB champion. Still to be decided are second and third place, with the Red Bull District Ride Diamond event still to go. Next time on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to the final World Cup of the season at Val de Sol. And we'll catch up with UCI leader Aaron Gwynn as he tries to win his fifth race of the season.